Lighting entire buildings or background flats so every window is illuminated is not very prototypical in my mind. However, lighting individual windows on separate floors of a multi-floor building is. This week I'm going to make some background flaps by printing them on photo quality paper and sticking them to some foam board. This is where the real magic happens, is by adding individual LED lights to various windows throughout the building to replicate lights being on in individual rooms. So you might ask, where am I going with this? So in a future video, I'll be using Arduino technology to randomly turn lights on and off within the building. This is animation on the next level. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Please comment below if you have any questions or comments. Also a big shout out to my Patreons out there. This channel was definitely not possible without my, my supporters on Patreon. The link is below. So without further ado, let's get started. MRT Scale Prints, helping you to add realism to your model railway. We are producing Craftsman quality prints in various scales, including HO, O and N scales. We are proudly Australian owned and operated. www.modelrailwaytechniques.com So in this week's how-to video, what we're going to look at is doing some background flats and then lighting them with some neat little products from Weissman. Now, this is not a video on how to scale up to get the, the correct proportions on your background flat pictures. So what I've got up here is in the Google machine is HO scale background pictures. So there's a myriad here. So obviously just be a bit mindful, depending on how you're gonna use them for personal use, you will have to check your own laws within your own country and the like regarding copyright. But there's um, quite a myriad of um, different types available for you. So I'm predominantly modeling German Austrian railways. So I acquired some discs by Joe Wee, um, which is a, a German company is my understanding. And I'll put that link below. So this is one of the undertakings, what we're going to look at doing today. So what I'm going to do is pick out some windows to cut out. So I'll definitely look at this little shop front down the, down the bottom here and probably pick up one of these other windows up in the third. And now we've got a design, we need to look at how we're going to print this. So I'm just using an Epson inkjet printer. So that paper there is some, um, just some generic matte thin photo paper. Printed out one of our printouts that we showed before. So what we need now is some sort of metal ruler. It doesn't matter on the, the scale whether it's metric or imperial, and also an exacto blade. So with a nice fresh blade. So this is blade number eleven, I think. So what we're going to look at doing, we're going to probably pick up, I think, these windows here and the door, and we'll look at picking one of these up here. So this video is not designed how to put these these together we're going to put them on some foam board which i'll show you shortly and we'll go from there regarding putting the lights on so here we go so what we're going to look at doing as i said cutting out these windows so what you need to do is obviously we've got the window frame and the sashes there so we're only interested in cutting out the bit the actual glazing part of it so don't be too concerned about what's behind it because as I said before, these are just purely background flats and will be viewed from some distance. I'm not interested in getting the detail into the room or hyper detailing individual rooms with this project. It's just going through and cutting all the glazing out and I'll show you how to do that shortly. Right, so you can see I've sort of gone through and cut those windows out. So what I'm going to do, I'll go through with a bit more detail and cut this door out and I'll pick up some of these other windows. So I'll see you back shortly. 
So here we've got some foam core board or gator foam or whatever you call it in uh, your part of the world. So to give you some sort of idea, it's about five millimeters thick in metric terms and about quarter of an inch, I think, in imperial terms. So this is obviously white in color. I'd normally prefer to use black just purely because when you stick the, the building down on the side of it, you've got this, this showing through, which it's not gonna pose a huge issue. You're just gonna have to go back through with a, a black Sharpie or black texture or some black paint to, to do the sides. Now, don't do what I've done before is now I've gone through and cut out all the windows that I'm gonna use is what you need to now do is because this is going to get stuck to there and then you're going to cut a recess out of the foam board and that and then you're going to stick your lighting boxes or your shadow boxes on the back here so which i'll show you shortly now just also the bits that you cut out just make sure you keep keep the windows because obviously we're going to go back through and draw these in on the medium that i'm going to use which i'll, I'll show you so the Alternatively, you can get them online. Um, these are Kibri ones, uh, are window dressings. So these come with some of their kits. So I obviously keep all these and use them as I see fit to add uh, curtains and window dressings to your models. Probably on this occasion, not really, really important purely because these are gonna be viewed from quite some distance away. So what I'm now gonna do is just line it up now, just so we know which way is up. I put a little arrow up the top there, just so I can always orientate, and I know that's obviously the back of it. So what I will now get is just a pencil, sharp pencil, and it's just a matter of ruling around all your window. Sorry, my hand's in the way there. This is going to give us our spot that we need to cut through the foam like so. Doesn't need to be perfect uh, 90 degree angles, it's just so we can cut this out and fix the, the shadow boxes or the light boxes to the back of these. So now what I'll do, I'll go through and I'll cut all these out um, with my steel rule and the X-Acto blade and I'll see you on the other side. So at this point what I do, I normally turn it over so you can see I've actually gone through that, that foam board hardly at all. So it's just a matter of just free handing just ever so carefully. So what I then do is you can see parts that I haven't come all the way through. So I'll just come through from the other direction. And then just push that through. Clean up all this rubbish in here. blade all right so i'll go back through and i'll tidy all that up so basically this is what you're looking at doing is now that's lined up to this one up here don't worry about those rough edges there um, they will be all masked out once we uh, get the the, the, the medium in to, to glaze it so what i'll do i'll go through and cut all these out Probably get myself a new fresh blade to start with and we'll go from there. All right, so we've gone through now cutting this all up. So there's probably real no nice way of doing this. What I mean is this, this foam board sort of rips a little bit, but that, that doesn't really matter too much. You're just trying to get some sort of receptacle there. So this is what I've come up with. Now this is quite a comp more complex design than probably what I'd normally do because above these, these were quite hard. So I had to end up having to, to reinforce them. So we'll put that aside. Now we'll come back to our printed 
sheet or printed building. So you might ask, how are we gonna glaze these windows? So all we're, we're trying to achieve here is with these windows is some sort of transparency, but not using like an acetate or something where you can see straight through, which that's fine if you wanna do that, but that's probably when you're gonna have to add a lot more detail to your rooms. And I don't think it's all that pertinent for something that's sitting in the background that could be several feet away, even several meters. Now, so what I use is this just baking paper and then I'll cut it down to the sizes that I need. So if we just turn this over, I'm just gonna do this in one, one sheet. So the tape I'm gonna use is just a Scotch tape 3M, um, which is a, the blue painters tape. So the reason I use that is, if I make any mistakes, it's very easy to peel off without um, damaging, damaging your, uh, your picture, your pictures too much. So at this point I've gone through and I've added all the baking paper. So it's just a matter of going, you don't need to get too neat with this because obviously it's going to get stuck back onto your foam board. So, so basically you just want something that's just a little bit transparent, not opaque. And as I mentioned before, you definitely don't want, for a background flat, my personal opinion, is you don't want any acetate or something that's totally clear. So the next thing is to add some of these window um, dressings back in. Now, I probably won't do anything with these bottom ones, but these top ones that were these ones here, it's why it's sort of Im important to keep them lying around. So all I will do, um, you could probably go back through with um, a black permanent marker or even white to, to um, replicate this, but I'm just gonna go back through with a sharp lead pencil and from a distance, I think that looks okay from my point of view. Comment below if you've got any other ideas. So all I'm gonna do here is put this back on the other side. And then what you can see, I don't know whether you can see that in camera just here. It's just a matter of tracing back through the best you can. So it's just a matter of this middle one, I'll go back through and I'll just color in. And you'll see what effect this gives once uh, the light is in behind it. As I said, you could probably use um, a white white pen or something similar, or a different color. Um, as you can see, it's a, a little bit different different color. And I'll just replicate to make sure that is very similar. So that's sort of the look that we're after. I'll probably tidy this top one up a little bit more. So what we need to do now is, so we've got our back because we put the little arrow at the top. So it's just a matter of getting a glue stick. You'll probably use different types of glue. So you probably want a glue that's not gonna go off against this stuff um, or damage it anyway. So it's just a matter of getting right on the edges I find the glue stick nice and easy, easy to control the workbench. And giving it a real good liberal coating. Let's make sure we get that around the right way. Might help. Be 
careful when you go over these so you don't put your finger through it like I just did. So that is step one. So the next step is to light these little puppies up. So what I'm gonna look at doing is, many years ago I bought these from Weissman and I can't read German, but basically that is what they are, is little window boxes, which then light up, just keep the light in a small, small, small area. So what they end up having, they come with They come with LEDs as well. And what happens is the LED just clips in the top there. And you can sort of see the LED just in there. So you imagine that just sticking over the back of one of these. And that would illuminate that, uh, that little box. So what I'll do, I'll go through and I'll set up and I'll show you how I install these. Probably what I would look at doing in the future as well is probably 3D printing some of these. I don't think that would be all that hard. Um, obviously these boxes are a little bit tapered and then just get it some cheap, um, probably warm white and cold white um, LED strips with that with three and backing on it you can just stick to the top all right so what we're going to do, look at doing as i said these little boxes just so the leds on these just clip to the top so as you can see the box size for that none of these are actually going to fit over all of these particularly these ones down the bottom so rest assured um i don't think it's going to matter too much because i what i'll do i'll just I'll show you the, the technique I use. So what I end up doing is just using some super glue, so Loctite or something similar, CA type glue, and just ever so little bit just on these here. Now just be mindful also, we've got the arrow up here which points to the obviously the, the top of the building so you want the light on the top to replicate i've done it before hence why i'm saying it um i accidentally put them upside down so obviously you, you want it to replicate as best you can um the lighting coming from the roof rooftop area so it's just a matter of then going around with the tape Now the reason I'm showing you this corner, this very edge one, is we don't have a lot of, of space there. So it's just a matter of we'll get those wires out of the way. As I said, it's not gonna matter. I'll do this back edge now, just towards me, and then I'll show you. So you don't want it overhanging the edge too much. And then it's just a matter of you probably fold it over and then we can just cut that down there. That tape will tear, which is good. Just be careful with the knife. Get that out of the way. So now what we want to try to do is gonna make our own little enclosure, so to speak. So this top edge here, that was a big gap, the light will just shine through. So what I'm just gonna do is just gonna go through and build up probably two more layers of tape. And then we'll give that a quick test. I might put another one down the side here as well. As I said, it doesn't look need to look pretty. So, as you can see, that's it there. You don't see the box at all. So what we might do, I might just quickly grab some power and then we will give it a test. So we've now got a power supply here. So what I'll, I'll, I normally use with these are this, these little butt converters. So obviously we can have 
up to 30 volts, 5 amps, I think, this one coming in, and then obviously you can regulate it coming out. So it's just a nice little way to sort of work out the intensity of them, and I probably will end up doing it this way anyway. Um, then you're not playing around with the resistors and the like. So what I am looking at doing also is I'll show you on a, on a different version of this um, that I've done that's got many more lights on it. But so you can imagine in an apartment block building like that, all these lights might be on in, in the shop front, but this hallway might not be on. So you imagine those would probably be on all night and this might come and go, turn on and off. And you imagine that with a whole backdrop with a whole, you know, a few dozen lights turning on and off randomly using Arduino. So that's probably going to be a next project of mine. And see how I would do the draw up the code for that. And then we'll make sure we get the correct negative and positive. Just splice these together very, very crudely for the interest of. So you can sort of see that. Now, probably what I would do moving forward with that that light to me is just a little bit low in that window so i probably put it up the top and then have the tape at, at the bottom but i think that at this point doesn't look too bad so yep yeah, that doesn't that doesn't look too bad would like to try to concentrate the light up here a little bit further here uh, i have to have to have it a play around how we might do that but as I said, I've never done windows this big before, so it's uh, a bit of a trial and error of this type of video as well. Comment below if you have any other ideas how you may have done yours. Um, that'd be great. I can always incorporate that in a separate video. So I'll turn my lights back on. So what we might look at doing now is I'll go through and I'll add the rest of them and then I'll come back and I'll do one final test and then we'll go from there. So I'll see you on the other side. Right, so what I've done, I've gone through and wired all up. I'll show you the back shortly. All right, so that's sort of the what we're we're achieving here. I uh, probably need to turn that down a little bit. So I'll just turn it on the side so you can see all the windows. But you imagine that from some distance away. I think that's probably more on okay. I probably need to rethink these bigger windows. I don't think they've come up too badly. Let me adjust the. All right, so these are these are 12 volt globes uh, LEDs, I should say. So I'll just knock that back to about six and a half volts. So just with the back convert here. So from a distance, I'll have to go back through with a black pen and just color in that a little bit more. That's just a little bit too transparent for my liking. On the whole, I'm pretty happy the way that's come up. As I said, I'll probably have to rethink how I'm going to do these bigger windows. Um, I might look at putting some window dressings in them. So I printed the building on thin matte photo paper. So what I'm going to just uh, show the, the back the back side of it quickly. So let me disconnect that. My very crude way of wide, how I've wired this up. Now I've gone through and put them all in. So obviously this has got four globes. This has got quite a few on it. So now what I've what I've done here is in the interest of sort of keeping the, the wires sort of nice and neat, I've sort of taped them down as well. But then the other end, because what I'm gonna look at doing is in due course. I have, I'm going to use Arduino to control these individually so they're not all either on or all off for the whole building. So I've just tethered the two cables together here so I can then find them later on a lot easier to work out um, how I'm going to control them with the Arduino. So on the whole, that probably took me, without the video side of things, probably 20 minutes to put together. Um, this one was probably a little more complex due to these windows here. So just be mindful of those. Some of the other ones are just when you're doing these types of windows, if you're doing, you know, three or four of them, might take you 15 minutes to knock together. Uh, it's nothing at all, so. So that's the end of the video. So thanks for watching. So make sure you comment below 
Give us any ideas what you thought of that video, ways that I can prove that, maybe the ways you've done your background flats and lit them up there. Also, I'm also looking out for anyone who's done the code for the Arduino side of things to, to help us out. So I'd love to do a video on that side of things. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, click that little bell. I can be notified of upcoming content. We'll see you next time.